as an INFP, your ability to connect with others on a deep level doesn't make you a social butterfly, but rather more like a truly empathetic spirit. What's up, Legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help INFPs to utilize their personality type to improve their life for self-development. And today's question is, people often think INFPs are shy and introverted, but I love connecting with people. How can I balance my social nature with my need for alone time? First, we need to debunk the understanding of an INFP as a like solo character that has no connection to the outer world. So we, we have this difficulty, okay, as INFPs, which you probably know, that we are feelers. We are focused on how our decisions impact people, starting with ourselves. How does this feel internally, introverted feeling, based off our values? We're trying to decide, is this a good choice or a bad choice? How does this resonate with me? And then how does it impact other people from there? So we are very emotional, very feeling-based, evaluative people. And yet people are draining. People tire us out. Except for the times that they don't. And so when they don't, it's because usually the other person is sparking some curiosity within us. Sparking some like what is this person like? Where could this lead to? Or we go off into this idealistic, fantastical version of how we've lived with them for decades now, and we've grown old together, and we've had this whole lifetime of experiences that even though we've just met the person. But I've met plenty of talkative INFPs. I have been talkative at times. It also depends for me if I'm in a Japanese-speaking environment or an English-speaking environment. And what that means for you is that different parts of us come out at different times based off the environment. So if you are with your family, you act differently than when you are with your best friend or when you are in a, a new environment. I was going to say a club or a bar or something like that if you go there. So knowing that different parts of us become active at different times, we can appreciate that sometimes we just want to be in the solo mode, in the defensive, resonating soul, introverted feeling aspect of ourselves. And that's okay. It's Remember, it's introverted feeling. It's not extroverted feeling. It's not vomiting forth emotion. It's going inward and trying to piece them together and understand them. But we also have our extroverted intuition. This is our auxiliary function, what I call the innovating explorer in the RPG model. And this is that exploratory character that gets excited about all the different possibilities, all the different options, all the different ways that life could pan out and expand. And that is usually the character that is active when we feel bubbly, when we feel a little bit more chipper. <laughs> a little bit like high energy, overly caffeinated kind of feeling, well, that's usually tied to extroverted intuition because that explorer will keep you young. That explorer will keep you youthful and childlike in a lot of ways because it is always wondering. And that curiosity is something that if you have ever met a child, you know that they are usually just full of questions. And that is the place that we can go to when we want to be more social as well. When we want to get beyond any antisocial behaviors and we want to connect with people, we have to lead with, first, what is this person like? Like if you treat them as an alien, this is one exercise that I recommend within the INFP masterclass, infp.geekpsychology.com. Lead with that and say, well, you know, if I never met this person if they were from another planet like what are they like what do they do what do they eat <laughs> what do they want in life what are their desires their fears and of course going in too heavily on those questions can turn some people off use that energy though use that creative joy that we have to understand deeply how the person feels just remember that your alone time is really important too because that's when we piece everything together and if you know that that is the process, you know that that's the cycle, the 
seasonal changes, then you can leverage that for self-understanding. I used to listen to like club music from the beginning of the day because I knew at night I was going to go out and I had to be like desensitized to it. That was my method of doing it. Whatever way works for you, if, you're, if you know you're going to go out there and be social, then build up those reserves. Expend your energy, which actually you will get refueled through doing it because it's an exciting, creative process. You just need to get used to the feeling of it being different. And then maybe the next day, take some time to process it. Journal, write about it, write a story, do some art, do something that is processing all those new patterns that you've gained. And eventually, if you're like me, you're going to want to know what's in the box. You're always going to want to explore more about what is going on outside. And it's going to actually feel more exciting and rejuvenating than it used to. So that is my perspective on how I would balance socializing and self selfalizing. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments what has worked for you, maybe what you're struggling with. Oh, also, if you want to learn more about your personality type, go to inowfeelpositive.com and get the five-day INFP Soul Journey email course. It's completely free, and it'll, it'll teach you about all these different parts of yourself so that you can be happy and live the life that you want. All right, good luck, have fun. Peace.